The COVID-19 pandemic, also known as the coronavirus pandemic, is an ongoing global pandemic of coronavirus disease 2019 caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. The novel virus was first identified from an outbreak in the Chinese city of Wuhan in December 2019, and attempts to contain it there failed, allowing it to spread across the globe. The World Health Organization declared a public health emergency of international concern on 30 January 2020 and a pandemic on the 11th of March 2020. As of 20 February 2022, the pandemic had caused more than 423 million cases and 5.88 million deaths, making it one of the deadliest in history. COVID-19 symptoms range from undetectable to deadly, but most commonly include fever, dry cough, and fatigue. Severe illness is more likely in elderly patients and those with certain underlying medical conditions. COVID-19 transmits when people breathe in air contaminated by droplets and small airborne particles containing the virus. The risk of breathing these in is highest when people are in close proximity, but they can be inhaled over longer distances, particularly indoors. Transmission can also occur if contaminated fluids reach the eyes, nose or mouth, and, rarely, via contaminated surfaces. Infected persons are typically contagious for 10 days, and can spread the virus even if they do not develop symptoms. Mutations have produced many strains with varying degrees of infectivity and virulence. COVID-19 vaccines have been approved and widely distributed in various countries, since December 2020. Other recommended preventive measures include social distancing, masking, improving ventilation and air filtration, and quarantining those who have been exposed or are symptomatic. Treatments include monoclonal antibodies, novel antiviral drugs, and symptom control. Governmental interventions include travel restrictions, lockdowns, business restrictions and closures, workplace hazard controls, quarantines, testing systems, and tracing contacts of the infected. The pandemic triggered severe social and economic disruption around the world, including the largest global recession since the Great Depression. Widespread supply shortages, including food shortages, were caused by supply chain disruption and panic buying. The resultant near-global lockdowns saw an unprecedented pollution decrease. Educational institutions and public areas were partially or fully closed in many jurisdictions, and many events were cancelled or postponed. Misinformation circulated through social media and mass media, and political tensions intensified. The pandemic raised issues of racial and geographic discrimination, health equity, and the balance between public health imperatives and individual rights. Chapter 1 Etymology the pandemic is known by several names. It is often referred in news media as the coronavirus pandemic, despite the existence of other human coronaviruses that have caused epidemics and outbreaks. During the initial outbreak in Wuhan, the virus and disease were commonly referred to as coronavirus, Wuhan coronavirus, the coronavirus outbreak and the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak with the disease sometimes called Wuhan pneumonia. In January 2020, the WHO recommended 2019 NCOV and 2019 NCOV acute respiratory disease as interim names for the virus and disease per 2015 international guidelines against using geographical locations, animal species, or groups of people in disease and virus names in part to prevent social stigma. WHO finalized the official names COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2 on the 11th of February 2020. Tedros Adhanom explained, CO for corona, VI for virus, D for disease and 19 for when the outbreak was first identified. WHO additionally uses the COVID-19 virus and the virus responsible for COVID-19 in public communications. WHO names variants of concern and variants of interest using Greek letters. The initial practice of naming them according to where the variants were identified is no longer common. A more systematic naming scheme reflects the variant's Pango lineage and is used for other variants. Chapter 2 Epidemiology Chapter 2 Section 1 Background 
SARS-CoV-2 is a newly discovered virus that is closely related to bat coronaviruses, pangolin coronaviruses, and SARS-CoV. The first known outbreak started in Wuhan, Hubei, China, in November 2019. Many early cases were linked to people who had visited the Huanan seafood wholesale market there, but it is possible that human-to-human -human transmission began earlier. The scientific consensus is that the virus is most likely of zoonotic origin, from bats or another closely related mammal. Despite this, the subject has generated extensive speculation about alternative origins. The origin controversy heightened geopolitical divisions, notably between the United States and China. The earliest known infected person fell ill on 1 December 2019. That individual did not have a connection with the later wet market cluster. However, an earlier case may have occurred on 17 November. Two thirds of the initial case cluster were linked with the market. Molecular clock analysis suggests that the index case is likely to have been infected between mid October and mid November 2019. Chapter 2 Section 2 Cases Official case counts refer to the number of people who have been tested for COVID-19 and whose test has been confirmed positive according to official protocols whether or not they experienced symptomatic disease. Many countries, early on, had official policies to not test those with only mild symptoms. Multiple studies claimed that total infections are considerably greater than reported cases. The strongest risk factors for severe illness are obesity, complications of diabetes, anxiety disorders, and the total number of conditions. On 9 April 2020, preliminary results found that in Gangelt, the center of a major infection cluster in Germany, 15% of a population sample tested positive for antibodies. Screening for COVID-19 in pregnant women in New York City, and blood donors in the Netherlands, found rates of positive antibody tests that indicated more infections than reported. Seroprevalence-based estimates are conservative, as some studies show that persons with mild symptoms do not have detectable antibodies. An analysis in early 2020 of cases in China by age indicated that a relatively low proportion of cases occurred in individuals under 20. It was not clear whether this was because young people were less likely to be infected, or less likely to develop symptoms and be tested. A retrospective cohort study in China found that children and adults were just as likely to be infected. Initial estimates of the basic reproduction number for COVID-19 in January were between 1.4 and 2.5, but a subsequent analysis claimed that it may be about 5.7. In December 2021, the number of cases continued to climb due to several factors including new COVID-19 variants. As of 28 December 282,790,822 individuals worldwide had been confirmed as infected. Chapter 2 Section 3 – Deaths As of 20 February 2022, more than 5.88 million deaths had been attributed to COVID-19. The first confirmed death was in Wuhan on 9 January 2020. These numbers vary by region and over time, influenced by testing volume, healthcare system quality, treatment options, government response, time since the initial outbreak, and population characteristics, such as age, sex, and overall health. Multiple measures are used to quantify mortality. Official death counts typically include people who died after testing positive. Such counts exclude deaths without a test. Conversely, Deaths of people who died from underlying conditions following a positive test may be included. Countries such as Belgium include deaths from suspected cases, including those without a test, thereby increasing counts. Official death counts have been claimed to underreport the actual death toll, because excess mortality data show an increase in deaths that is not explained by COVID 19 deaths alone. Using such data, Estimates of the true number of deaths from COVID-19 worldwide have included a range from 9.5 to 18.6 million by The Economist, as well as over 10.3 million by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Such deaths include deaths due to healthcare capacity constraints and priorities, as well as reluctance to seek care. 
The time between symptom onset and death ranges from 6 to 41 days, typically about 14 days. Mortality rates increase as a function of age. People at the greatest mortality risk are the elderly and those with underlying conditions. Chapter 2 Section 3 Subsection 2 Infection Fatality Ratio The infection fatality ratio is the cumulative number of deaths attributed to the disease divided by the cumulative number of infected individuals. It is expressed in percentage points. Other studies refer to this metric as the infection fatality risk apostrophe. In November 2020, a review article in Nature reported estimates of population weighted IFRs for various countries, excluding deaths in elderly care facilities, and found a median range of 0.24% to 1.49%. IFRs rise as a function of age. These rates vary by a factor of 10,000 across the age groups. For comparison the IFR for middle-aged adults is two orders of magnitude more likely than the annualized risk of a fatal automobile accident and far more dangerous than seasonal influenza. In December 2020, a systematic review and meta-analysis estimated that population-weighted IFR was half a percent to 1% in some countries, 1% to 2% in other countries, and about 2.5% in Italy. This study reported that most of the differences reflected corresponding differences in the population's age structure and the age-specific pattern of infections. Chapter 2 Section 3 Subsection 3 Case Fatality Ratio Another metric in assessing death rate is the case fatality ratio, which is the ratio of deaths to diagnoses. This metric can be misleading because of the delay between symptom onset and death and because testing focuses on symptomatic individuals. Based on Johns Hopkins University statistics, the global CFR is 1.39% as of the 20th of February 2022. The number varies by region and has generally declined over time. Chapter 3 Disease Chapter 3 Section 1 Signs and Symptoms Symptoms of COVID-19 are variable, ranging from mild symptoms to severe illness. Common symptoms include headache, loss of smell and taste, nasal congestion and runny nose, cough, muscle pain, sore throat, fever, diarrhea, and breathing difficulties. People with the same infection may have different symptoms, and their symptoms may change over time. Three common clusters of symptoms have been identified, one respiratory symptom cluster with cough, sputum, shortness of breath, and fever, a musculoskeletal symptom cluster with muscle and joint pain, headache, and fatigue, a cluster of digestive symptoms with abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. In people without prior ear, nose, and throat disorders, loss of taste combined with loss of smell is associated with COVID-19 and is reported in as many as 88% of cases. Chapter 3 Section 2 Transmission The disease is mainly transmitted via the respiratory route when people inhale droplets and small airborne particles that infected people exhale as they breathe, talk, cough, sneeze, or sing. Infected people are more likely to transmit COVID-19 when they are physically close. However, infection can occur over longer distances, particularly indoors. Chapter 3 Section 3 Cause SARS-CoV-2 belongs to the broad family of viruses known as coronaviruses. It is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus, with a single linear RNA segment. Coronaviruses infect humans, other mammals, including livestock and companion animals, and avian species. Human coronaviruses are capable of causing illnesses ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. SARS-CoV-2 is the seventh known coronavirus to infect people, after 229E, NL63, OC43, HKU1, MERS-CoV, and the original SARS-CoV. Chapter 3 Section 4 Diagnosis the standard methods of testing for presence of SARS-CoV-2 are nucleic acid tests, which detects the presence of viral RNA fragments. As these tests detect RNA but not infectious virus, 
its ability to determine duration of infectivity of patients is limited. The test is typically done on respiratory samples obtained by a nasopharyngeal swab, however, a nasal swab or sputum sample may also be used. The WHO has published several testing protocols for the disease. Chapter 3 Section 5 Prevention Preventive measures to reduce the chances of infection include getting vaccinated, staying at home, wearing a mask in public, avoiding crowded places, keeping distance from others, ventilating indoor spaces, managing potential exposure durations, washing hands with soap and water often for at least 20 seconds, practicing good respiratory hygiene, and avoiding touching the eyes, nose, or mouth with unwashed hands. Those diagnosed with COVID-19 or who believe they may be infected are advised by the CDC to stay home except to get medical care, call ahead before visiting a healthcare provider, wear a face mask before entering the healthcare provider's office and when in any room or vehicle with another person, cover coughs and sneezes with a tissue, regularly wash hands with soap and water and avoid sharing personal household items. Chapter 3 Section 6 Vaccines A COVID-19 vaccine is a vaccine intended to provide acquired immunity against severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, the virus that causes coronavirus disease 2019. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, an established body of knowledge existed about the structure and function of coronaviruses causing diseases like severe acute respiratory syndrome and Middle East respiratory syndrome. This knowledge accelerated the development of various vaccine platforms during early 2020. The initial focus of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines was on preventing symptomatic, often severe illness. On 10 January 2020, the SARS-CoV-2 genetic sequence data was shared through GISED, and by 19 March, the global pharmaceutical industry announced a major commitment to address COVID-19. The COVID-19 vaccines are widely credited for their role in reducing the severity and death caused by COVID-19. As of late December 2021, more than 4.49 billion people had received one or more doses in over 197 countries. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine was the most widely used. Chapter 3 Section 7 Treatment For the first two years of the pandemic no specific, effective treatment or cure was available. In 2021, the European Medicines Agency's Committee for Medicinal Products for Human Use approved the oral antiviral protease inhibitor, Paxlovid, to treat adult patients. FDA later gave it a new most cases of COVID-19 are mild. In these, supportive care includes medication such as paracetamol or NSAIDs to relieve symptoms, adequate intake of oral fluids and rest. Good personal hygiene and a healthy diet are also recommended. Supportive care includes treatment to relieve symptoms, fluid therapy, oxygen support and prone positioning, and medications or devices to support other affected vital organs. More severe cases may need treatment in hospital. In those with low oxygen levels, use of the glucocorticoid dexamethasone is recommended to reduce mortality. Non-invasive ventilation and, ultimately, admission to an intensive care unit for mechanical ventilation may be required to support breathing. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation has been used to address the issue of respiratory failure. Existing drugs such as hydroxychloroquine, bapinavir slash ritonavir, ivermectin and so-called early treatment are not recommended by U.S. or European health authorities. Two monoclonal antibody-based therapies are available for early use in high-risk cases. The antiviral remdesivir is available in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and several other countries, with varying restrictions, however, it is not recommended for use with mechanical ventilation, and is discouraged altogether by the World Health Organization, due to limited evidence of its efficacy. Chapter 3 Section 8 Variants Several variants have been named by WHO and labeled as a variant of concern or a variant of interest. They share the more infectious D614G mutation, Delta-dominated, and then eliminated earlier VOC from most jurisdictions. Omicron's immune escapability may allow it to spread via breakthrough infections, 
which in turn may allow it to coexist with Delta, which more often affects the unvaccinated. Chapter 3 Section 9, Prognosis The severity of COVID-19 varies. The disease may take a mild course with few or no symptoms, resembling other common upper respiratory diseases such as the common cold. In 3-4% of cases symptoms are severe enough to cause hospitalization. Mild cases typically recover within two weeks, while those with severe or critical diseases may take three to six weeks to recover. Among those who have died, the time from symptom onset to death has ranged from two to eight weeks. Prolonged prothrombin time and elevated C-reactive protein levels on admission to the hospital are associated with severe course of COVID-19 and with a transfer to ICU. Chapter 4, Strategies Many countries attempted to slow or stop the spread of COVID-19 by recommending, mandating or prohibiting behavior changes, while others relied primarily on providing information. Measures ranged from public advisories to stringent lockdowns. Outbreak control strategies are divided into elimination and mitigation. Experts differentiate between elimination strategies that aim to completely stop the spread of the virus within the community, and mitigation strategies that attempt to lessen the effects of the virus on society, but which still tolerate some level of transmission within the community. These initial strategies can be pursued sequentially or simultaneously during the acquired immunity phase through natural and vaccine-induced immunity. Nature reported in 2021 that 90% of immunologists who responded to a survey think that the coronavirus will become endemic. Chapter 4 Section 1 Containment Containment is undertaken to stop an outbreak from spreading into the general population. Infected individuals are isolated while they are infectious. The people they have interacted with are contacted and isolated for long enough to ensure that they are either not infected or no longer contagious. Screening is the starting point for containment. Screening is done by checking for symptoms to identify infected individuals, who can then be isolated or offered treatment. The Zero Covid strategy involves using public health measures, such as contact tracing, mass testing, border quarantine, lockdowns and mitigation software in order to stop community transmission of COVID-19 as soon as it is detected, with the goal of getting the area back to zero detected infections and resuming normal economic and social activities. Successful containment or suppression reduces RT to less than 1. Chapter 4 Section 2 Mitigation Should containment fail, Efforts focus on mitigation, measures taken to slow the spread and limit its effects on the healthcare system and society. Successful mitigation delays and decreases the epidemic peak, known as flattening the epidemic curve. This decreases the risk of overwhelming health services and provides more time for developing vaccines and treatments. Individual behavior changed in many jurisdictions. Many people work from home instead of at their traditional workplaces. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 2 Non-Pharmaceutical Interventions Non-pharmaceutical interventions that may reduce spread include personal actions such as hand hygiene, wearing face masks, and self-quarantine, community measures aimed at reducing interpersonal contacts such as closing workplaces and schools and cancelling large gatherings, community engagement to encourage acceptance and participation in such interventions, as well as environmental measures such as surface cleaning. Many such measures were criticized as hygiene theater. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 3 Other Measures More drastic actions, such as quarantining entire populations and strict travel bans have been attempted in various jurisdictions. China, and Australia's lockdowns have been the most strict. New Zealand implemented the most severe travel restrictions. South Korea introduced mass screening and localized quarantines, and issued alerts on the movements of infected individuals. Singapore provided financial support, quarantined, and imposed large fines for those who broke quarantine. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 4 Contact Tracing Contact tracing attempts to identify recent contacts of newly infected individuals, and to screen them for infection, 
the traditional approach is to request a list of contacts from infectees, and then telephone or visit the contacts. Another approach is to collect location data from mobile devices to identify those who have come in significant contact with infectees, which prompted privacy concerns. On 10 April 2020, Google and Apple announced an initiative for privacy-preserving contact tracing. In Europe and in the US, Palantir Technologies initially provided COVID-19 tracking services. Chapter 4 Section 3 Healthcare WHO described increasing capacity and adapting healthcare as a fundamental mitigation. The ECDC and WHO's European Regional Office issued guidelines for hospitals and primary healthcare services for shifting resources at multiple levels, including focusing laboratory services towards testing, cancelling elective procedures, separating and isolating patients, and increasing intensive care capabilities by training personnel and increasing ventilators and beds. The pandemic drove widespread adoption of telehealth. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 2 Improvised Manufacturing Due to capacity supply chain's limitations, some manufacturers began 3D printing material such as nasal swabs and ventilator parts. In one example, an Italian startup received legal threats due to alleged patent infringement after reverse engineering and printing 100 requested ventilator valves overnight. On 23 April 2020, NASA reported building, in 37 days, a ventilator which is undergoing further testing. Individuals and groups of makers created and shared open-source designs and manufacturing devices using locally sourced materials, sewing, and 3D printing. Millions of face shields, protective gowns, and masks were made. Other ad hoc medical supplies included shoe covers, surgical caps, powered air purifying respirators, and hand sanitizer. Novel devices were created such as ear savers, non-invasive ventilation helmets, and ventilator splitters. Chapter 4 Section 4 Herd Immunity in July 2021, several experts expressed concern that achieving herd immunity may not be possible because Delta can transmit among vaccinated individuals. CDC published data showing that vaccinated people could transmit Delta, something officials believed was less likely with other variants. Consequently, WHO and CDC encouraged vaccinated people to continue with non-pharmaceutical interventions such as masking, social distancing, and quarantining if exposed. Chapter 5, History Chapter 5 Section 1, 2019 The outbreak was discovered in Wuhan in November 2019. It is possible that human-to-human -human transmission was happening before the discovery. Based on a retrospective analysis starting from December 2019, the number of cases in Hubei gradually increased, reaching 60 by the 20th of December and at least 266 by the 31st of December. A pneumonia cluster was observed on the 26th of December and treated by Dr. Jiang Jixian. She informed the Wuhan Jianghan CDC on the 27th of December. Vision Medicals reported the discovery of a novel coronavirus to the China CDC on the 28th of December. On the 30th of December, a test report from Capital Bio Med Lab addressed to Wuhan Central Hospital reported an erroneous positive result for SARS, causing doctors there to alert authorities. Eight of those doctors, including Li Wenliang, were later admonished by the police for spreading false rumors, and I Fen was reprimanded. That evening, Wuhan Municipal Health Commission issued a notice about the treatment of pneumonia of unknown cause. The next day, WMHC made the announcement public, confirming 27 cases, enough to trigger an investigation. On 31 December, the WHO office in China was informed of cases of the pneumonia cases and immediately launched an investigation. Official Chinese sources claimed that the early cases were mostly linked to the Huan and seafood wholesale market which also sold live animals. However, in May 2020, CCDC Director George Gao indicated the market was not the origin. Chapter 5 Section 2, 2020 On the 11th of January, 
WHO was notified by the Chinese National Health Commission that the outbreak was associated with exposures in the market, and that China had identified a new type of coronavirus, which it isolated on 7 January. Initially, the number of cases doubled approximately every seven and a half days. In early and mid January, the virus spread to other Chinese provinces, helped by the Chinese New Year migration. Wuhan was a transport hub and major rail interchange. On 10 January, the virus genome was shared through GISED. A retrospective study published in March found that 6,174 people had reported symptoms by 20 January. A 24 January report indicated human transmission, recommended personal protective equipment for health workers, and advocated testing given the outbreak's pandemic potential. On 31 January the first published modeling study warned of inevitable independent self-sustaining outbreaks in major cities globally and called for large-scale public health interventions. On 30 January, 7,818 infections had been confirmed, leading WHO to declare the outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. On the 11th of March, WHO elevated it to a pandemic. By the 31st of January, Italy had its first confirmed infections in two tourists from China. On the 19th of March, Italy overtook China as the country with the most reported deaths. By the 26th of March, the United States had overtaken China and Italy as the country with the highest number of confirmed infections. Genomic analysis indicated that the majority of New York's confirmed infections came from Europe, rather than directly from Asia. Testing of prior samples revealed a person who was infected in France on 27 December 2019 and a person in the United States who died from the disease on 6 February. In April Russia sent a cargo plane with medical aid to the United States. In October, WHO reported that 1 in 10 people around the world may have been infected, or 780 million people, while only 35 million infections had been confirmed. Dot on 9 November, Pfizer released trial results for a candidate vaccine, showing a 90% effectiveness against infection. That day, Novavax entered an FDA fast track application for their vaccine. Dot on 14 December, Public Health England reported that a variant had been discovered in the UK's southeast, predominantly in Kent. The variant, later named Alpha, showed changes to the spike protein that could be more infectious. As of 13 December, 1,108 infections had been confirmed. On 4 February 2020, U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services Alex Azar waived liability for vaccine manufacturers. Chapter 5 Section 3, 2021 On 2 January, the Alpha variant, first discovered in the UK, had been identified in 33 countries. On 6 January, the Gamma variant was first identified in Japanese travelers returning from Brazil. On 29 January, it was reported that the Novavax vaccine was 49% effective against the Beta variant in a clinical trial in South Africa. The Coronavac vaccine was reported to be 50.4% effective in a Brazil clinical trial. On the 12th of March, several countries stopped using the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine due to blood clotting problems, specifically cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. On the 20th of March, the WHO and European Medicines Agency found no link to thrombus leading several countries to resume the vaccine. In March WHO reported that an animal host was the most likely origin, without ruling out other possibilities. The Delta variant, was first identified in India. In mid-April, the variant was first detected in the UK and two months later it had metastasized into a third wave there, forcing the government to delay reopening that was originally scheduled for June. On 10 November, Germany advised against the Moderna vaccine for people under 30. On 24 November, the Omicron variant was detected in South Africa, a few days later the World Health Organization declared it a VOC. The new variant is more infectious than the Delta variant. Chapter 5 Section 4, 2022 On 1 January, 
Europe passed 100 million cases amidst a surge in the Omicron variant. On 14 January, the World Health Organization recommended two new treatments, varicitinib and sotrovimab. On 24 January it was reported that about 57% of the world has been infected by COVID-19, per the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation Model. Chapter 6 – National Responses National reactions ranged from strict lockdowns to public education. WHO recommended that curfews and lockdowns should be short-term measures to reorganize, regroup, rebalance resources, and protect the health care system. As of 26 March 2020, 1.7 billion people worldwide were under some form of lockdown. This increased to 3.9 billion people by the first week of April, more than half the world's population. Chapter 6, Section 1, Asia As of the end of 2021, Asia's peak had come at the same time and at the same level as the world as a whole, in May 2021. However, cumulatively they had experienced only half the world average. China opted for containment, inflicting strict lockdowns to eliminate spread. The vaccines distributed in China included the Bib, Wib, and CoronaVac. It was reported on the 11th of December 2021 that China had vaccinated 1.162 billion of its citizens, or 82.5% of the total population of the country against COVID-19. During the initial outbreak, multiple sources cast doubt upon the accuracy of China's death tolls, with some suggesting intentional data suppression. However since March 2020, China's large-scale adoption of zero COVID has largely contained the disease, with external experts agreeing with the accuracy of China's infection numbers and deaths since the initial outbreak. The first case in India was reported on 30 January 2020. India ordered a nationwide lockdown starting 24 March 2020, with a phased unlock beginning 1 June 2020. Six cities accounted for around half of reported cases, Mumbai, Delhi, Ahmedabad, Chennai, Pune, and Kolkata. A second wave hit India in April 2021, straining healthcare services. On 21 October 2021, it was reported that the country had surpassed 1 billion vaccinations. Iran reported its first confirmed cases on 19 February 2020 in Com. Early measures included the cancellation of concerts and other cultural events, Friday prayers, and education shutdowns. Iran became a center of the pandemic in February 2020. More than 10 countries had traced their outbreaks to Iran by 28 February, indicating a more severe outbreak than the 388 reported cases. The Iranian parliament closed, after 23 of its 290 members tested positive on 3 March 2020. At least, 12 sitting or former Iranian politicians and government officials had died by 17 March 2020. By August 2021, the pandemic's fifth wave peaked, with more than 400 deaths in one day. COVID-19 was confirmed in South Korea on 20 January 2020. Military bases were quarantined after tests, showed three infected soldiers. South Korea introduced what was then considered the world's largest and best organized screening program, isolating infected people, and tracing and quarantining contacts. Screening methods included mandatory self-reporting by new international arrivals, through mobile application, combined with drive-through testing, and increasing testing capability to 20,000 people slash day. Despite some early criticisms, South Korea's program was considered a success in controlling the outbreak without quarantining entire cities. Chapter 6, Section 2, Europe The global COVID-19 pandemic arrived in Europe with its first confirmed case in Bordeaux, France, on 24 January 2020, and subsequently spread widely across the continent. By 17 March 2020, Every country in Europe had confirmed a case, and all have reported at least one death, with the exception of Vatican City. Italy was the first European nation to experience a major outbreak in early 2020, becoming the first country worldwide to introduce a national lockdown. 
By the 13th of March 2020, the World Health Organization declared Europe the epicenter of the pandemic and it remained so until the WHO announced it has been overtaken by South America on the 22nd of May. By the 18th of March 2020, more than 250 million people were in lockdown in Europe. Despite deployment of COVID-19 vaccines, Europe became the pandemic's epicenter once again in late 2021. The Italian outbreak began on the 31st of January 2020, when two Chinese tourists tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 in Rome. Cases began to rise sharply, which prompted the government to suspend flights to and from China and declare a state of emergency. On the 22nd of February 2020, the Council of Ministers announced a new decree law to contain the outbreak including quarantining more than 50,000 people in northern Italy. On 4 March the Italian government ordered schools and universities closed as Italy reached a hundred deaths. Sport was suspended completely for at least one month. On the 11th of March Conti stopped nearly all commercial activity except supermarkets and pharmacies. On 19 March Italy overtook China, as the country with the most COVID-19 related deaths. On 19 April the first wave ebbed, as seven-day deaths declined to 433. On 13 October, the Italian government again issued restrictive rules to contain the second wave. On 10 November Italy surpassed 1 million confirmed infections. On 23 November, it was reported that the second wave of the virus had led some hospitals to stop accepting patients. The virus was first confirmed to have spread to Spain on the 31st of January 2020, when a German tourist tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 in La Gomera, Canary Islands. Post hoc genetic analysis has shown that at least 15 strains of the virus had been imported, and community transmission began by mid-February. On the 29th of March, it was announced that. Beginning the following day, all non-essential workers were ordered to remain at home for the next 14 days. The number of cases increased again in July in a number of cities including Barcelona, Zaragoza, and Madrid, which led to re-imposition of some restrictions but no national lockdown. By September 2021, Spain was one of the countries with the highest percentage of its population vaccinated, while also being one of the countries more in favor of vaccines against COVID-19. However, as of January 21, 2022, this figure had only increased to 80.6%. Nevertheless, Spain leads Europe for per capita full vaccination rates. Italy is ranked second at 75%. Sweden differed from most other European countries in that it mostly remained open. For the Swedish constitution, the Public Health Agency of Sweden has autonomy that prevents political interference, and the agency favoured remaining open. The Swedish strategy focused on longer-term measures, based on the assumption that after lockdown the virus would resume spreading, with the same result. By the end of June, Sweden no longer had excess mortality. Devolution in the United Kingdom meant that each of its four countries developed its own response. England's restrictions were shorter lived than the others. The UK government started enforcing social distancing and quarantine measures on the 18th of March 2020. On the 16th of March, Prime Minister Boris Johnson advised against non-essential travel and social contact, praising work from home and avoiding venues such as pubs, restaurants, and theatres. On the 20th of March, the government ordered all leisure establishments to close and promised to prevent unemployment. On the 23rd of March, Johnson banned gatherings and restricted non-essential travel and outdoor activity. Unlike previous measures, these restrictions were enforceable by police through fines and dispersal of gatherings. Most non-essential businesses were ordered to close. On the 24th of April 2020, it was reported that a promising vaccine trial had begun in England, the government pledged more than £50 million towards research. On 16 April 2020, it was reported that the UK would have first access to the Oxford vaccine, due to a prior contract, should the trial be successful, some 30 million doses would be available. On 2 December 2020, the UK became the first developed country to approve the Pfizer vaccine, 
800,000 doses were immediately available for use. Chapter 6 Section 3, North America The virus arrived in the United States on 13 January 2020. Cases were reported in all North American countries after St. Kitts and Nevis confirmed a case on 25 March, and in all North American territories after Bonaire confirmed a case on 16 April. 78,733,444 confirmed cases have been reported in the United States with 941,889 deaths, the most of any country, and the 19th highest per capita worldwide. COVID-19 is the deadliest pandemic in U.S. history, it was the third leading cause of death in the U.S. in 2020, behind heart disease and cancer. From 2019 to 2020, U.S. life expectancy dropped by three years for Hispanic Americans, 2.9 years for African Americans, and 1.2 years for white Americans. These effects have persisted as U.S. deaths due to COVID-19 in 2021 exceeded those in 2020. In the United States, COVID-19 vaccines became available in December 2020, under emergency use, beginning the National Vaccination Program, with the first vaccine officially approved by the Food and Drug Administration on 23 August, 2021. In March 2020, as cases of community transmission were confirmed across Canada, all of its provinces and territories declared states of emergency. Provinces and territories have, to varying degrees, implemented school and daycare closures, prohibitions on gatherings, closures of non-essential businesses and restrictions on entry. Canada severely restricted its border access, barring travellers from all countries with some exceptions. Cases surged across Canada, notably in the provinces of British Columbia, Alberta, Quebec, and Ontario, with the formation of the Atlantic Bubble, a travel-restricted area of the country. Vaccine passports were adopted in all provinces and two of the territories. Chapter 6, Section 4, South America The COVID-19 pandemic was confirmed to have reached South America on 26 February 2020 when Brazil confirmed a case in Sao Paulo. By 3 April, all countries and territories in South America had recorded at least one case. On 13 May 2020, it was reported that Latin America and the Caribbean had reported over 400,000 cases of COVID-19 infection with 23,091 deaths. On the 22nd of May 2020, citing the rapid increase of infections in Brazil, the World Health Organization WHO declared South America the epicenter of the pandemic. As of the 16th of July 2021, South America had recorded 34,359,631 confirmed cases and 1,047,229 deaths from COVID-19. Due to a shortage of testing and medical facilities, it is believed that the outbreak is far larger than the official numbers show. The virus was confirmed to have spread to Brazil on the 25th of February 2020, when a man from Sao Paulo who had traveled to Italy tested positive for the virus. The disease had spread to every federative unit of Brazil by 21 March. On 19 June 2020, the country reported its one millionth case and nearly 49,000 reported deaths. One estimate of under-reporting was 22.62% of total reported COVID-19 mortality in 2020. As of 24 February 2022, Brazil, with 28,493,336 confirmed cases and 646,714 deaths, has the third highest number of confirmed cases and second highest death toll from COVID-19 in the world, behind only those of the United States and of India. Chapter 6, Section 5, Africa the COVID-19 pandemic was confirmed to have spread to Africa on 14 February 2020, with the first confirmed case announced in Egypt. The first confirmed case in Sub-Saharan Africa was announced in Nigeria at the end of February 2020. Within three months, the virus had spread throughout the continent, as Lesotho, the last African sovereign state to have remained free of the virus, reported a case on 13 May 2020. By 26 May, 
it appeared that most African countries were experiencing community transmission, although testing capacity was limited. Most of the identified imported cases arrived from Europe and the United States rather than from China where the virus originated. Many preventive measures have been implemented by different countries in Africa including travel restrictions, flight cancellations, and event cancellations. In early June 2021, Africa faced a third wave of COVID infections with cases rising in 14 countries. By the 4th of July the continent recorded more than 251,000 new COVID cases, a 20% increase from the prior week, and a 12% increase from the January peak. More than 16 African countries, including Malawi and Senegal, recorded an uptick in new cases. The World Health Organization labeled it Africa's worst pandemic week ever. Chapter 6, Section 6, Oceania The COVID-19 pandemic was confirmed to have reached Oceania on 25 January 2020 with the first confirmed case reported in Melbourne, Australia. It has since spread elsewhere in the region, although many small Pacific Island nations have thus far avoided the outbreak by closing their international borders. Two Oceania sovereign states and one dependency have yet to report an active case. Australia and New Zealand were praised for their handling of the pandemic in comparison to other Western nations, with New Zealand and each state in Australia wiping out all community transmission of the virus several times even after reintroduction into the community. As a result of the high transmissibility of the Delta variant, however, by August 2021, the Australian states of New South Wales and Victoria had conceded defeat in their eradication efforts. In early October 2021, New Zealand also abandoned its elimination strategy. Chapter 6, Section 7, Antarctica Due to its remoteness and sparse population, Antarctica was the last continent to have confirmed cases of COVID-19 and was one of the last regions of the world affected directly by the pandemic. The first cases were reported in December 2020, almost a year after the first cases of COVID-19 were detected in China. At least 36 people are confirmed to have been infected. Chapter 7, Responses The pandemic shook the world's economy, with especially severe economic damage in the United States, Europe, and Latin America. A consensus report by American intelligence agencies in April 2021 concluded, efforts to contain and manage the virus have reinforced nationalist trends globally, as some states turned inward to protect their citizens and sometimes cast blame on marginalized groups. COVID-19 inflamed partisanship and polarization around the world as bitter arguments exploded over how to respond. International trade was disrupted amid the formation of no-entry enclaves. Chapter 7 Section 1 – Travel Restrictions The pandemic led many countries and regions to impose quarantines, entry bans, or other restrictions, either for citizens, recent travelers to affected areas, or for all travelers. Travel collapsed worldwide, damaging the travel sector. The effectiveness of travel restrictions was questioned as the virus spread across the world. One study found that travel restrictions only modestly affected the initial spread, unless combined with other infection prevention and control measures. Researchers concluded that travel restrictions are most useful in the early and late phase of an epidemic and restrictions of travel from Wuhan unfortunately came too late. The European Union rejected the idea of suspending the Schengen Free Travel Zone. Chapter 7 Section 2 – Repatriation of Foreign Citizens Several countries repatriated their citizens and diplomatic staff from Wuhan and surroundings, primarily through charter flights. Canada, the United States, Japan, India, Sri Lanka, Australia, France, Argentina, Germany, and Thailand were among the first to do so. Brazil and New Zealand evacuated their own nationals and others. On 14 March, South Africa repatriated 112 South Africans who tested negative, while four who showed symptoms were left behind. Pakistan declined to evacuate its citizens. On 15 February, 
the U.S. announced it would evacuate Americans aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship, and on 21 February, Canada evacuated 129 Canadians from the ship. In early March, the Indian government began repatriating its citizens from Iran. On 20 March, the United States began to withdraw some troops from Iraq. Chapter 7 Section 3, United Nations In June 2020, the Secretary-General of the United Nations launched the UN Comprehensive Response to COVID-19. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development was criticized for its slow response, especially regarding the UN's global ceasefire, which aimed to open up humanitarian access to conflict zones. Chapter 7 Section 3 Subsection 2 WHO The WHO spearheaded initiatives such as the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund to raise money for the pandemic response, the UN COVID-19 Supply Chain Task Force, and the Solidarity Trial for investigating potential treatment options for the disease. The COVAX program, co-led by the WHO, Gavi, and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, aimed to accelerate the development, manufacture, and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, and to guarantee fair and equitable access across the world. Chapter 7 Section 4, Protests Against Governmental Measures In several countries, protests rose against restrictions, such as lockdowns. A February 2021 study found that protests against restrictions were likely to directly increase spread. Chapter 8, Impact Chapter 8, Section 1, Economics The pandemic and responses to it damaged the global economy. On 27 February, worries about the outbreak crushed U.S. stock indexes, which posted their sharpest falls since 2008. Tourism collapsed, due to travel restrictions, closing of public places including travel attractions, and advice of governments against travel. Airlines cancelled flights, while British regional airline Flybe collapsed. The cruise line industry was hard hit, and train stations and ferry ports closed. International mail stopped or was delayed. The retail sector faced reductions in store hours or closures. Retailers in Europe and Latin America faced traffic declines of 40%. North America and Middle East retailers saw a 50 to 60% drop. Shopping centers faced a 33 to 43% drop in foot traffic in March compared to February. Mall operators around the world coped by increasing sanitation, installing thermal scanners to check the temperature of shoppers, and canceling events. Hundreds of millions of jobs were lost including more than 40 million Americans. According to a report by Yelp, about 60% of U.S. businesses that closed will stay shut permanently. The International Labor Organization reported that the income generated in the first nine months of 2020 from work across the world dropped by 10.7%, or $3.5 trillion. Chapter 8 Section 1 Subsection 2 Supply Shortages the outbreak was blamed for panic buying, emptying groceries of essentials, such as food, toilet paper, and bottled water. Panic buying stemmed from perceived threat, perceived scarcity, fear of the unknown, coping behavior and social psychological factors. Supply shortages were due to disruption to factory and logistic operations, shortages were worsened by supply chain disruptions from factory and port shutdowns, and labor shortages. Shortages continued as managers underestimated the speed of economic recovery after the initial economic crash. The technology industry, in particular, warned of delays from underestimates of semiconductor demand for vehicles and other products. According to WHO's Adonum, demand for personal protective equipment rose 100 fold, pushing prices up 20 fold. PPE stocks were exhausted everywhere. In September 2021, the World Bank reported that food prices remain generally stable, and the supply outlook remains positive. However, the poorest countries witnessed a sharp increase in food prices, reaching the highest level since the pandemic began. The Agricultural Commodity Price Index stabilized in the third quarter but remained 17% higher than in January 2021. By contrast, 
petroleum products were in surplus at the beginning of the pandemic, as demand for gasoline and other products collapsed, due to reduced commuting and other trips. The 2021 global energy crisis was driven by a global surge in demand as the world economy recovered. Energy demand was particularly strong in Asia. Chapter 8 Section 2 Culture The performing arts and cultural heritage sectors have been profoundly affected by the pandemic, impacting organizations' operations as well as individuals, both employed and independent, globally. By March 2020, across the world and to varying degrees, museums, libraries, performance venues, and other cultural institutions had been indefinitely closed with their exhibitions, events and performances cancelled or postponed. Some services continued through digital platforms, such as live streaming concerts or web-based arts festivals. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 2 China Multiple provincial-level administrators of the Communist Party of China were dismissed over their handling of quarantine measures. Some commentators claimed this move was intended to protect CCP General Secretary Xi Jinping. The U.S. intelligence community claimed that China intentionally underreported its COVID-19 caseload. The Chinese government maintained that it acted swiftly and transparently. Journalists and activists in China who reported on the pandemic were detained by authorities, including Jiang Zan, who was arrested and tortured. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 3 Italy In early March, the Italian government criticized the EU's lack of solidarity with Italy. On the 22nd of March, after a phone call with Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the Russian army to send military medics, disinfection vehicles, and other medical equipment to Italy. In early April, Norway and EU states like Romania, and Austria started to offer help by sending medical personnel and disinfectant, and Ursula von der Leyen offered an official apology to the country. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 4 United States The outbreak prompted calls for the United States to adopt social policies common in other wealthy countries, including universal health care, universal child care, paid sick leave, and higher levels of funding for public health. Some political analysts claimed that the pandemic contributed to President Donald Trump's 2020 defeat. Beginning in mid-April 2020, protesters objected to government-imposed business closures and restricted personal movement and association. Simultaneously, essential workers protested in the form of a brief general strike. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 5 Other Countries the number of journalists imprisoned or detained increased worldwide, with some related to the pandemic. The planned NATO Defender 2020 military exercise in Germany, Poland, and the Baltic states, the largest NATO war exercise since the end of the Cold War, was held on a reduced scale. The Iranian government was heavily affected by the virus, which infected some two dozen parliament members and political figures. Iran President Hassan Rouhani wrote a public letter to world leaders asking for help on 14 March 2020, due to a lack of access to international markets. Saudi Arabia, which launched a military intervention in Yemen in March 2015, declared a ceasefire. Diplomatic relations between Japan and South Korea worsened. South Korea criticized Japan's ambiguous and passive quarantine efforts after Japan announced travelers from South Korea must quarantine for two weeks. South Korean society was initially polarized on President Moon Jae-in's response to the crisis, many Koreans signed petitions calling for Moon's impeachment or praising his response. Some countries passed emergency legislation. Some commentators expressed concern that it could allow governments to strengthen their grip on power. In the Philippines, lawmakers granted President Rodrigo Duterte temporary emergency powers. In Hungary, the parliament voted to allow Prime Minister Viktor Orban to rule by decree indefinitely, suspend parliament and elections, and punish those deemed to have spread false information. In countries such as Egypt, Turkey, and Thailand, opposition activists and government critics were arrested for allegedly spreading fake news. In India, 
journalists criticizing the government's response were arrested or issued warnings by police and authorities. Chapter 8 Section 3 – Food Systems The pandemic disrupted food systems worldwide, hitting at a time when hunger-slash-undernourishment was rising. Food access fell, driven by falling incomes, lost remittances, and disruptions to food production. In some cases, food prices rose. The pandemic and its accompanying lockdowns and travel restrictions slowed movement of food aid. For the World Health Organization 811 million individuals were undernourished in 2020, likely related to the fallout of COVID-19. Chapter 8 Section 4 – Education The pandemic impacted educational systems in many countries. Many governments temporarily closed educational institutions, often replaced by online education. Other countries, such as Sweden, kept their schools open. As of September 2020, approximately 1.077 billion learners were affected due to school closures. School closures impacted students, teachers, and families with far-reaching economic and societal consequences. They shed light on social and economic issues, including student debt, digital learning, food insecurity, and homelessness, as well as access to child care, health care, housing, internet, and disability services. The impact was more severe for disadvantaged children. The Higher Education Policy Institute reported that around 63% of students claimed worsened mental health as a result of the pandemic. Chapter 8 Section 5 Health The pandemic impacted global health for many other conditions. Hospital visits fell. Visits for heart attack symptoms declined by 38% in the US and 40% in Spain. The head of cardiology at the University of Arizona said, my worry is some of these people are dying at home because they're too scared to go to the hospital. People with strokes and appendicitis were less likely to seek treatment. Medical supply shortages impacted many people. The pandemic impacted mental health, increasing anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, affecting healthcare workers, patients and quarantined individuals. Chapter 8 Section 6 – Environment The pandemic and the reaction to it positively affected the environment and climate, as a result of reduced human activity. During the anthropause, fossil fuel use decreased, resource consumption declined, and waste disposal improved, generating less pollution. Planned air travel and vehicle transportation declined. In China, Lockdowns and other measures resulted in a 26% decrease in coal consumption, and a 50% reduction in nitrogen oxide's emissions. Earth Systems scientist Marshall Burke estimated that two months of pollution reduction likely saved the lives of 77,000 Chinese residents. Chapter 8 Section 7 – Discrimination and Prejudice Heightened prejudice, xenophobia, and racism toward people of Chinese and East Asian descent were documented around the world. Reports from February 2020 cited racist sentiments about Chinese people deserving the virus. Chinese people and other Asian peoples in the United Kingdom and United States reported increasing levels of abuse and assaults. Former U.S. President Trump was criticized for referring to SARS-CoV-2 as the Chinese virus and Kung flu, which others condemned as racist and xenophobic. Age based discrimination against older adults increased. This was attributed to their perceived vulnerability in subsequent physical and social isolation measures, which, coupled with their reduced social activity, increased dependency on others. Similarly, limited digital literacy left the elderly more vulnerable to isolation, depression, and loneliness. Chapter 8, Section 8 lifestyle changes. The pandemic triggered massive changes in behavior, from increased internet commerce to cultural changes in the job market. Online retailers in the U.S. posted $791.70 billion U.S. dollars in sales in 2020, an increase of 32.4% from $598.02 billion from the year before. Home delivery orders increased, 
while indoor restaurant dining shut down due to lockdown orders or low sales. Hackers, cybercriminals, and scammers took advantage of the changes to launch new attacks. Education in some countries temporarily shifted from physical attendance to video conferencing. Massive layoffs shrank the airline, travel, hospitality, and other industries. Chapter 9, Information Dissemination Research is indexed and searchable in the NIH COVID-19 portfolio. Some newspaper agencies removed their online paywalls for some or all of their pandemic-related articles and posts, some scientific publishers made pandemic-related papers available with open access. The share of papers published on preprint servers prior to peer review increased dramatically. Chapter 9 Section 1 – Misinformation Misinformation and conspiracy theories about the pandemic are widespread. They travel through mass media, social media, and text messaging. WHO declared an infodemic of incorrect information. Cognitive biases, such as jumping to conclusions and confirmation bias, were linked to conspiracy beliefs. Chapter 9 Section 2 – Health Agencies COVID-19 by the World Health Organization COVID-19 by the Government of Canada COVID-19 by the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control COVID-19 by the Ministry of Health, Singapore COVID-19 by the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention COVID-19 Information for the Workplace by the US National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health Chapter 9 Section 3 – Directories COVID-19 Directory on Curly COVID-19 Resource Directory on OpenMD Chapter 9 Section 4 – Data and Graphs Coronavirus Disease Situation Reports and Map by the World Health Organization COVID-19 Resource Center Map and Historical Data by Johns Hopkins University COVID-19 datasets published by the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control COVID-19 observer based on Johns Hopkins University data COVID-19 statistics and research published by Our World in Data COVID-19 tracker from Stat News COVID-19 projections for many countries published by Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation Spreadsheets Country Comparisons Epidemic Calculator World Travel Restrictions Based on World Food Program Data Chapter 9 Section 5 – Medical Journals Coronavirus by the New England Journal of Medicine Coronavirus Hub by BMJ Publishing Group Coronavirus Disease 2019 by JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association COVID-19, Novel Coronavirus Outbreak by Wiley Publishing COVID-19 Pandemic Collection by Public Library of Science COVID-19 Portfolio, a curated collection of publications and preprints by National Institutes of Health COVID-19 Research Highlights by Springer Nature COVID-19 Resource Center by The Lancet Novel Coronavirus Information Center by Elsevier